Time to shine today, Podcast Varsity Squad. This is Scott Ferguson, and I am super uber stoked to bring you my good friend, my beautiful friend, Pam Sherman, from The Perfect Balance. And Pam is like a really a no excuses person. She might wake up in the morning, not feel like doing it, but she knows she's got to get it done to get her body moving, to get the blood pumping. And the best part about it is she loves to pay it forward and help you do the same. Like, I'm going to put the author page in the show notes. Don't go there now. But she's wrote in a ton of books that uh, I can't wait to dig into. And I'm ashamed to say that I haven't yet. But her passion has always been health and wellness. She was a group exercise instructor and personal trainer for 20 years, as well as a running coach, mindset life coach, and food coach. Her career took a little bit of a turn because some driver decided to plow into her um, while she was on a little run. And luckily, she's still breathing air on this earth, and she's able to help level you up. So I'm going to tell you right now, break out your digital note taker or a pen and pad and paper. Sit back and relax. You're going to absolutely love this because Pam is coming on. And Pam, please introduce yourself to Time to Shine Today podcast for RC Squad. But first, what's your favorite color and why? Hot pink. Really? Because it, because it makes me happy. In fact, if I had a hot pink shirt, I'd wear it right now. Hot pink, uh, bright orange, and turquoise. It's just the bright colors bring joy and happiness every time I see them. I, I love that you said that because I'm having Time to Shine Today shirts made some of them will be hot pink so you're gonna mail i'm gonna mail one out to you yes. so you gotta rock it in one of your videos with squat if you check her out on tiktok youtube instagram she absolutely kills it and I, again i'm ashamed to say i haven't followed her before but i dug into her and i was like wow so seriously welcome to the show and i would love to hear your story of where you kind of started pam to where you know we'll talk a little bit about that accent as well sure so what really triggered that to help people level up I grew up in a family with two big brothers, so I was always sporty. They always had to babysit me, so I was always, you know, tagging along, football, <laughs> whatever. And then my dad was actually an amazing runner in college and was one of those recreational runners that it was before it was popular. He ran, which you'd see somebody running in the 70s, and you're like, what are they doing? And I asked one day if I can go for a run with him, and I ran two miles without stopping and felt like a million bucks. I never mm -hmm. stopped. Now, I was never very good, Scott. I was very middle of the road, but I just loved it. So continued through college, or high school, college. My girlfriends and I went to the Ohio State University. <laughs> we were not, yes, we were not good enough to run there, but we decided to run the Columbus Marathon every year just because we love to compete. Wow. And I look back, I'm like, we were young and dumb. We didn't know any better. It was a long way to go, but it was right. fun. An annual, um, an annual thing we did for eight years. Was that in March time frame or when was that? October. October. Okay. Because I always go to the Arnold in Columbus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Arnold yep. Classic. yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Fall is the perfect time oh in the. Oh, my gosh. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. And then after college, I moved out to California and my first roommate was a group exercise instructor and she and I would run and I'd take her classes and she's like, hey, there's a class up at the junior college on how to be a group exercise instructor I think you should take it mm. and I was like okay sounds great I was <laughs> sure. I was yeah I was pregnant at the time I knew I didn't want to work full-time when I had kids I did that and then I thought well I might as well get my personal training certification because I think women that I have in class might want me to train them absolutely and my career was born I just I want to say it was very lucky but I have been a trainer my whole life, even when I was a little kid. So that was what I was meant to do. I was born with motivation dripping out of my pores. So it's amazing for me to help inspire others on their health journey. And I love that. So you you were, what, do you, what is your feeling on, because I've been wanting to ask you this, so on competition. Like, I know you mentioned that, you know, you, you weren't quote unquote good enough to make yeah. the, the Buckeye, you know, cross country oh. team or whatnot. But yeah. what is your thoughts on competition? I love competition. And as okay. runners, you're competing with yourself. I, I continue to run after I finished doing marathons, I did half marathons. I was competing to beat my own time. Thank I think you. I was wanting that answer, man. Yes. 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 Yeah. And I'm, I'm super proud to say my PR in the half marathon is 140. And I worked very hard for that. Wow. And my PR in the marathon is 328. And I worked very hard for that. And it was my first marathon was a 438. So it was over an hour difference from my very first marathon. So competing with myself is the only thing I've ever done as a person in a solo sport. Mm. Right. 
Right. Nothing wrong with competition. It makes you work harder. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. I, you know, I'm 50 years old and I know you shared your age with me too, but like it, it's, we need that competition moving forward with life. I'm a big believer that that dude in the mirror is the biggest, you know, competition that I have to beat that guy from yesterday, or at least try to keep up and, you know, I compete in submission grappling and it's luckily there's just people my age. Yeah. If not, I did <laughs> tore up, but no, with that being said, like who, do you train clients with one-on-one -on -one or group setting or both? Because I mentioned, I heard you mention the group setting, but where are you at with that right now? I have some local clients that come to my backyard because I have a beautiful gym that I have Thought. such fun. It's An so IG. fun. It's <laughs> so great. And I also have a private Facebook group coaching program called the Perfect Balance Tribe. And it's mm -hmm. made up of women. Most of, I'm 55. So most of them 50 or over. And I motivate, inspire, encourage. And we talk about food, fitness, game, um, strategizing for weekends, holidays, because our society is set up for people to fail. There's crap all around us and it takes work to, to be your healthiest self. Yes. So, so that's a, that's, I do private and group coaching. So when somebody comes to you, maybe in the private uh, side of things, what have you found or what is maybe some of your secret sauce, if you don't mind sharing, yeah. to maybe help them find their blind spots? 99% of people who come to me want to lose weight. No way. Way. <laughs> and, and my non-negotiable is you have to log on my fitness pal and we have to be friends because I have to see what you're eating, period. Ooh, accountability. Love that. I never even thought of that. I'm, you know what? I'm going to add that into people that I have for mindset shifts and stuff like that. Because diet, which I know you'll agree with me, or lifestyle that you live, not diet, I hate that word too. But the lifestyle that we live has so much to do with our energy and our mindset, correct? Correct. And I'm 55, you're 50. When I was growing up, it was all about deprivation, you know, yes. eating less, eating nothing, where I'm telling my clients, eat more protein yes. and eat more, eat more vegetables. Let's Love it. stay out of the pantry. Right. And I, and I want to, I actually want to eat more to lose weight, not less. Yes. I love it. And, you know, maybe shop the supermarket or your whole foods or sprouts on the outside of the aisles. Right. And, and kind of try to live there instead of going those aisles. You never need to go down the cereal aisle. It's <laughs> nothing but crap. I oh, love it. Love it. So. When someone's maybe come to you and you're in that discovery phase and you, you, they've shared their, you know, my fitness pal with you and whatnot, yeah. is there any good question that you wish they would ask you, but never do? How can you help me stop from binging? And it can go both ways on that binge. And what I mean by that like stop your Twinkie grabs and stuff like that, but also stop your starvation. Like you almost binge towards starvation. I've heard you say, not in those words, but yeah, like yeah. people think that not eating will, they'll lose weight. Yeah. And really women, I work with mostly women. I, I have a male client right now, but they eat because they're sad, happy, frustrated, lonely, bored, tired. I don't know if a lot of people actually feel hungry and it's okay to be hungry. And then eat as opposed to, oh, it, it's, it's noon. I better eat some lunch. Yeah. And why are you binging? Is it you've had too much to drink? Because I know I don't drink anymore. But in my 40s, if I had one beer too many, it would lead me to overeating every time. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. I, yeah. It's, it, there's so many reasons. So looking at the behavior behind it, my, my friend of mine just, um, she's going back to school She's overwhelmed. It's her first week of classes. She didn't tell me she binged yesterday. I said, okay, I think it's because it's your first week of school and you're feeling overwhelmed. And she said, yes. Mm. So what can you do with your feelings besides eat your feelings? Can you journal? Can you take a nap? Can you call a friend? Can you walk your dog? It's just hard to stop when you're in that moment, like, like almost putting on the brakes, like, okay, I don't want to go there. What, what can I do with these feelings inside my body? Right. And obviously that's a really an emotional kind of attachment to it. And I love what you just yeah. said. It's like people will say, or it's been proven that thirst is a delayed indicator of hydration. I, I feel that hunger is also 
a delayed indication of you actually should be feeling your body. Now, again, what it's what you put in your body, right? Yes. That, that makes all the sense. And if you get more, I always mess this word out, satiation y foods, you know, that that are going to like I heard you say vegetables, they will fill you with with it and, and less than that, but it'll also lead them to building muscle and burning the fat as well, correct? I'm just asking that as a question, really. But uh, protein is the most satiating macronutrients. Boom. Yes, you're right. Fiber, yes. fiber is the second. And when I tell my ladies who I coach, mostly ladies, to switch from their car base, like just think of an English muffin and butter or peanut butter, <laughs> which you're hungry an hour later because you can right. eat five of those to a protein-based breakfast. I had a woman say, oh my God, I was full for hours. Like, I know that's what it does for you. It keeps you full. So you have less, like women, I think spend so much time thinking about food. What's the next meal? Sure. When you're full, you don't think about that. You're like, okay, I can think about 800 other things. Sure. Within your process or your protocol, do you have, lack of a better term, recipes or how teach your clients how to shop? for what they want to make. Cause a lot of people are all, they make, ex- I, I'm a big believer that, you know, winners make adjustments, mediocre people make excuses. So to make that adjustments, do you help them with when they become your client, maybe learn to shop, how to shop, what to have in your cupboard and whatnot? Well, I, I have a digital, my favorite 20 recipes. It's on my website, but Ooh, I try okay. to really keep it simple. Scott, protein and veggies, protein and veggies, I love apples. Nobody ever got fat eating apples. I hate that the keto movement like villainized fruit. But Mm -hmm. when you keep it, my thing is keep it to real food. If your grandmother didn't recognize it, except for I think we need protein powder because women can't eat enough protein. But if your grandmother didn't recognize it, you shouldn't be eating it. It should be a very once in a while food. Wow. I I have to write that down. (laughs) (laughs) Recognize that you shouldn't be eating it. Wow. That's that, that that's true too I mean, it, it's is it kind of an abridged version or a dump, lowered version of the paleo is what you kind of eating real about? food yeah single ingredient food is really always going to serve you best love it love it so have you seen the movie back to the future of course okay let's get that delorean with marty mcfly okay let's go back to the double deuce the 22 year old okay you know pam what okay. kind of knowledge nuggets? That's what we call them here at Times Change Today. What kind of knowledge nuggets might you drop on her? Not to change anything, except okay. maybe getting hit by the car. But like, no, what no, would... <laughs> that ha- that happened for me, not to you me. You know what? That... Stop my question. I want to hear about this because I I passed right over it. Please share that yeah. a little bit. No, that is aside from asking my husband out. That is the best thing that ever happened to me. Okay. I was training for my girlfriends and I used to go to San Francisco to run the hot chocolate run every year. It was a 9.3 mile race and I was out. It's so interesting in hindsight. I'm a morning exerciser. Get up, do it. This day was in December of 2017 and my husband and I decided to finish the Christmas shopping for our kids. Went to the mall, went to lunch, saw a movie. I came home and I went out for a run at three o'clock. Now in California, it was December, beautiful, 50 degrees, no wind. Sure. I was running. I looked, I got to the two miles, looked okay. It was about 8.15 pace, really happy. And then a pizza delivery guy who took a right probably 25 times a day, looked mm. left and turned right. And I was right there. Oh. So I did put my hand out and I did eat the windshield and then rolled off his car into the second lane. And luckily for me, it was a Sunday because that's a busy road. Nobody was there. Right. And I was able to crawl back to the sidewalk. And uh, it was, it was a, ended up being a great thing. Prior to that, I was a group exercise instructor and trainer, but I think the universe said, you need to get out and reach more people on their health journey. Because I was in such excellent shape, I had started strength training in 2014. I didn't break any bones. Mm Mm-hmm. I lost six teeth in the process because I ate the windshield. Um, awesome. But I didn't... <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, no. It sounds like pain, man. Oh, well, your body's in shock. So it really, yeah. I mean, my, ma- my mouth was sore and I couldn't eat solid food for three months. And it took two years to get, actually get the teeth back into my head. Wow. But I was running six weeks later. I was working out, you know, a couple of weeks later because I, because I'd like to move my body. And you so we, took 
that to expand your reach? Literally at that time, it would happened in December. In February, um, my friend introduced me to her neighbor who is a website designer. And I was like, I think I kind of want to reach more people. I can't be in the classroom. And she's like, mm. sure, we can. And I'll create a YouTube channel. My daughter was a senior in high school. She's like, so I said, I want to write it. I can write. So I want to write a newsletter. She goes, okay, when people sign up, you need to give them something. So mm. I started writing, started writing, started writing. I gave it back to her. She said, this is a book. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> she goes, just give me 10 more pages. And my first book, The Perfect Balance Guide to Healthy Living was born. I didn't even set out to write a book. Mm. And then I was helping my daughter's soccer team. I did strength training with them once a week. And the girls would tell me the awful things they would eat. Mm. So I wrote nutrition for athletes, for high school kids. Like you shouldn't have Taco Bell. That's a right. food you rent. It doesn't do anything for your body. I know, <laughs> I know. Uh, no, you're right. So my books came one by one really in my recovery. I never, ever would have thought about writing any books. And it, 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 they're not big, long books, 50, 60 pages. Those are the best books. We get, they're no nonsense. Yeah. You get actual steps you can take to start getting better, um, healthier every right. day. That's it. That's, That's it. beautiful. And it's beautiful that you took something that a lot of people would be like, oh, I'm, life is done. And then turn it into a plus. That, 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 that's fantastic. So then let's get in that DeLorean with Martin. Okay. Fly, but maybe go back okay. to, again, 22 years old. Okay. Is there anything that you might tell her to maybe help her shorten a learning curve? You know, maybe blast through, maybe just level up just a little bit quicker? Well, this is in the 80s before the internet. And some young people aren't even going to know what that means. At right. 22, I was... My heaviest, we didn't know anything about nutrition. I was a marathon mm. runner, but I ate like crap. I'm in college. I'm eating fast food, eating McDonald's. Uh, I carried an extra 35 pounds, which didn't help my marathoning at the time at all. Right. I would tell myself the same thing and start eating more real food and stop eating less. Oh my God. Boxes of Kraft mac and cheese mm, back oh, in the day. <laughs> Ramen noodles and mac and cheese. Oh, and then <laughs> oh the, the Vienna sausages, the, those for some reason, I really took to those. <laughs> oh my gosh. So. I, okay. I would say that, but there's one other thing. Can we, how sure. deep can we go here? As deep as you'd like. I, I grew up in a super emotionally abusive household. I would have told my 22 year old self to break up with my parents at that time mm -hmm. and not wait till I was 42. I right. would have said your mental health, it, you're going to be crushed for 20 more years unless you do something about it now. Yeah. yeah. So I should... it, with my father, I love him. We're best friends. We speak twice a week. We text all the time. Um, it, it, but he, and he hears me say this on the show, you know, but he, he worked in the line at general motors, you know, and it was like, do we didn't have that identity you know, for, for that mindset. And luckily I hung out with people that I became a poser really just to kind of fit in because I was good at sports and whatnot. And they, I just, I grasped onto that. Right. And yeah. I didn't break up with my father, but I really separated myself for a little bit to get to somewhere. But then I got myself and this didn't happen to you, but I got too big for my britches and lost everything. And the first person that was there for me was dad. You know, so he was yeah. like, here's 300 bucks for those new tires. And that's where we really started rebuilding the relationship um, with that. So, but I understand that if you have a, a background that pulls you down, yeah. you got to just, you know, cut loose. Hopefully it's not forever for people, but you do have to kind of cut that loose. I 100% understand. There was no uh, talk of mental health back then. There was none. no. Are you kidding me? I, I didn't have any mentors to say, hey, you don't actually have to live like that. Right. I'm was, sorry. I, for some reason, I attracted them, but I get it. If I didn't, I would have been the same, 100%. Yeah. Um, how do you want, Pam, your dash remembered? That little line in between your incarnation date and your expiration date. Hopefully, it's a long ways down the road, but your life date and death date. How does Pam want her dash remembered? Helping inspire people on their fitness journey and health journey every single day. Yeah. Yeah, and live, you know, what? what is it, 108 years is is a million hours or something like that, right? A million hours, yeah. that's what I would love to to main, to main reach 
you know, I always tell Susan, you're seven years older. She so got to live to 115. You know, <laughs> we yes. just got to laugh about yeah. that. No, that, that's, that's beautiful. I love how you're quick and concise and, and know what you really want. But I also think that you've really kind of are going to be sliding across home plate, bumped and bruised, knowing that you did the world, you know, it's just a fantastic deed. And what do you think then? Because I, we walk in kind of the same shoes. You're like a sister from a different mister, right? You know, what do you think then people must understand, misunderstand about you the most? Well, that I've always had it easy. And I try to post every Thursday, like I have struggled with my weight myself a couple times in my life. And people look at you right now and go, oh, you got it easy. You don't right. ever struggle. Everybody right. struggles. Yeah. And you don't know anybody's backstory. No. Everybody has struggles. Yeah. It's yeah, it, uh, And recognize that, you know, that it, luckily now I went through some stuff in the military, with PTSD and whatnot, and I'm able to now be brought into the mental hygiene part yeah. of, of the, and, you know, just understanding that everybody has a backstory, even before Afghanistan, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're pulling forward into the future. And so many people have a foot in the past, a foot in the future, and they piss all over the present, right? And that's where you really just want to keep them neutral and keep them, yeah. you know, there. And I, I just watching your stuff, that I believe that's that's what you do. You keep them neutral and in the moment a lot. Am I correct in that or am I wrong? A, a million percent. Okay. Nobody can change what's already happened. Right. We can't worry about what's going to happen. All we have is today. Yes. Love it. And with my, even with my coaching clients, Pam, I, I say, you know, the rear view mirror is small for a reason, right? Yes. <laughs> for that, you know, past is a great place to learn from, but just don't live there. No matter, even if it was good, you know, there's so much more of that huge yeah. dashboard that's ahead of you, but you ain't getting anywhere unless you eyes on the road, put it in drive and go because so many people intend to do stuff or decide yes. to do stuff, but they never take action. And with that, what is some of the protocol that you use? I'm sorry, it's military. I say protocol. Meta. You know, what kind of protocol do you use to maybe take them, make them, you know, like Tony Robbins says, take that massive action in their life? Well, I find with people's health, the worst thing they can do is try to change too many things at once. Think of like the New York resolutions. I'm going to give up carbs, stop drinking wine, do an hour, hour of cardio, blah, blah. No, you're not. Yeah. Let's, let's have it stack with your health. So take one thing at a time, yes. excel at it, and then take the next thing. Yes. Number one thing for people is sleep. If you do not sleep enough, you are going to crave sugar the next day. You're not going to exercise. You're not going to want to make a nice big salad because you're feeling lazy. Yes. Get your sleep under control first, foremost, always. Yes. This little gadget here, this aura ring. I have one too. It has oh me locked in on sleep now because, you know, I, I, I was bad. And Susan's like, I'm getting you this because they say it works. And it, it does because now it's like, you know, I'm up at 430 and I'm on the jujitsu mats you know, by six, three mornings a week. And if I don't get that six and a half to seven for me, as I found yeah. it gets my score into the nineties, then I'm a, just junk, you know, for the day, <laughs> you know, sleep is paramount. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, it, I love it, my aura ring. I, that's the first thing I get up. I'm like, what's my score this morning? Right. <laughs> it's me too. I love it. I love it. So what are three things that Pam can't live without? Exercise. Okay coffee there you go walking my dog love it what do you put in your coffee um I, and I, I assume you're not talking about family you know because of course I love my family my husband yeah my no kids. no that's that's a given okay. air water food family okay yeah. okay right. um I like nut pods creamer really we, okay. it's, a, it's a coconut and almond based creamer and it's thick and yummy and I mean I would love to drink heavy cream but it I'm 55. I can't afford to drink heavy cream in my coffee. Yeah, I, I feel you. Same here. I love you know, you got heavy whipping cream and stuff. And when Susan made all this stuff for Christmas, I was like a little thing of heavy whipping cream. So until that was gone, this, I drank it. But have you ever <laughs> tried Laird's? I do. Laird's okay. is delicious. I use that when I travel. I bring it okay. with me when I travel. Good, good. I just was wondering because I was going to turn you on to that because I absolutely love it. Uh, beautiful. So then, Pam, what is your definition of a life well lived? A life well lived is doing what you are so passionate about doing. Yes. Right. And, and not saying, I, I find so many women say, I wish I could, 
or I hope I have, you got to do it. Yes. And, and yes. my tagline is your health is your wealth. And that, because when you do not have your health, you don't have anything. You can't. Yeah. I, I saw my dad died from Alzheimer's. My husband or my father-in-law died of obesity. Their quality of life was terrible. And right. I think too many people don't think about the future. Like my, I'm 55. My 65 year old self thanks me for what I'm doing today because I'm going to feel oh great God. at 65. Wow. So your older self thanks you for your present self. Wow. That, that's, that's amazing. And that, that's, you live the, the, you walk the talk and I see it. And I'd love that you put it out there on the platforms. It, that's just a blessing. It's funny that you said your health is your wealth. I, the, my company in 2008 was called healthy wealth today, Stop right? It. I still own the URL, right? But I was getting like, for lack of a better, better term, shadow banned, meaning like the, the search engine saw wealth uh -huh. in it. And so once I switched it, because I've always owned time, it was time to shine personal training, time to shine this. I had all of those it was under time shine. And my coach was like, just call it time to shine. And then, so once I switched it and moved all the content over, it was like, things were getting noticed. It's just too bad because I still own Healthy Wealth today. One day I'm going to relaunch that. That's awesome. And Squad, we are going to take my good friend, rock star extraordinaire, fitness mama, awesome sauce, through our leveling up lightning round just as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors and affiliates. Time to shine today, podcast varsity squad. We are back, and Pam, we will hook up live one day and enjoy a cup of coffee because I am right here with you in mine, and we'll have a discussion. A few of these questions we'll probably talk about 20, 30 minutes, but today, okay, we're very strict about this. Five seconds with no explanation, so they can all be answered that way. You ready to level up? Ready to level up. Let's do it. Pam, what is the best leveling up advice you've ever received? Find your why and go after it. That's... Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Daily exercise. Yeah. So you see me kind of walking down the street or an event, or you just, I mean, Fergie looks like he's in his doldrums. Outside of the books that you have fantastically authored, what book might you hand me? Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. David, I know DJ. He's our, a good guy. Awesome. What's your most commonly used emoji when you text? Definitely smiley face. Hey! Nicknames growing up? Pammy. Hey, love it. <laughs> Chess checkers or Monopoly? Checkers. Me too. I'm right there with you. <laughs> so when you do this, what is your go-to ice cream flavor? Vanilla. Me too. See, we are so good. So there's a sandwich called the Pammy Whammy. Build that okay. sandwich for me. Toasted sourdough. There you go. Goat cheese. Ooh. Fresh good basil. Time. Yeah. Sliced turkey. Ooh. Nice. And a little bit of um, garlic aioli. Ooh, aioli. Yeah. There you Toasted go. Toasted in a panini press. Panini stop. Love it. Love it. Love it. So favorite charity and or organization you'd like to give your time or money to? Boys and Girls Club of America. Thank you. Good call. And last question. You can elaborate a little bit on this one, but what was the best decade of music? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? 80s, 1000%. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, you know, you probably graduated, what, 85, 86? 85. 85. Okay. I was 90. So it was like we had the, you know, the the invasions from U2 and Duran Duran from out of the country. You know, you had the kind of rap with Run DMC and the Beastie Boys. You had the big hair, don't care. You know, you had the glam rock, metal rock. Everything just happened. And it's funny, Pam, songs today use hooks from the songs in the 80s. Like, it's crazy, right? Like Flo Rida or Pitbull. I'm like, wait a minute. That's AHA's take on me in his song, right? Yes. That's awesome. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be good friends. I love this. So, Pam, how can we find you, my friend? Okay, my website is theperfectbalance.guru. Mm. TikTok and Instagram is Pam underscore Sherman one, and that's really where I do the most. Oh, and my YouTube channel is Pam Sherman the Perfect Balance, where I have loads of videos. I have a stretching playlist. I have a ten minute playlist, and before people go, ugh, ten minutes. Scott, 10 minutes is better than zero minutes every day of the week. Mm, I love it. 
So I, I, have lo I have lots of things to help inspire. And I always bring my TikTok over to my YouTube because I don't know who my YouTube audience is. Right. So I figure I might as well share as much as I can. Heck, you still have 2,500 subscribers on YouTube. That's amazing. That's good. And they're getting engagement. So that, that, that's beautiful. So tell us maybe about one of your books that really stands out that you love to give out as a gift. Because Squad, she has eight books that she's authored here. And they're all fantastic. They're all quick reads. And they're all chock full of you know knowledge nuggets and information you can implement right now. But what's that one, Pam, that you really love? Uh, I'm having trouble between the Perfect Balance Workbook and the 3M Daily Journal. I find that it's too easy not to think about your health. And both of those make you think about your health on a daily basis. What's your motivation? How are you going to move your body? And right. are you going to mi be mindful in your eating? If you put those things together, that makes an incredible day. So I probably the 3M Journal, is gonna, I'm going to say, is going to be my favorite. Gotcha. So squad, what I'm going to do is I'm going to purchase the perfect balance workbook in the daily 3M journal for the per first person that puts in Pammy Whammy into, <laughs> I don't care if you text it to us. I don't care if it's on Pinterest, Instagram, my good friend, Pam uh, got me uh, going on to TikTok now, which will be launched this weekend for me. <laughs> um, anywhere you put that in, I will have, uh, I will love to purchase it. And Pam, if you don't mind just John Han Hancocking it and just send it out, that'd be fantastic. And Pam, do me one last solid and leave us with one last knowledge nugget we can take with us, internalize, and take action on. I think it would be amazing when you wake up every day to start the day with gratitude. Uh, that's, I have each one of my coaching clients eat a gratitude sandwich every day. And what I mean by that is, you know, your first line, which is bread, it says, you know, your intentions, your wins from yesterday. Um, and who you're sending good vibes to. The middle is your concerns for the day. And then I have them list 14 things that they are absolutely grateful for underneath. And then it, like a sandwich, squeezes it out. So I love that you have people wake up and want people to wake up with gratitude. And that's just, you know, fantastic. And squad, we just had, I just had a fantastic, fun conversation with my good friend, Pam Sherman, and a rock star author, you know, she grew up with two big brothers, so she had kind of that sporty background. You know, she had motivation. She's born with motivation just bleeding out of her pores. You know, she believes in competition with that person in the mirror. Don't be afraid to outdo that person from yesterday. Because she said that our society is set up for people to fail. You work daily to towards your healthiest self. And if you need help with that, let me introduce you to my good friend, Pam. You know, she will remind us not to shop the aisles at grocery stores or your health food stores. Stand the perimeters where food actually rots if it sits there too long. Get into those. You know, it's okay to eat when you're hungry. It's just don't rent your food, which I love that. Like if you're eating Taco Bell, McDonald's, you know, once a year, okay, I get it. But still, you're renting that food. It's not doing nothing for your body. There's no return on investment that that will help you with that. You know, in Basically, she said, if grandma doesn't recognize it, don't eat it. You know, and if you want some really good ideas, go to her website for her favorite recipes. And besides her, Sadie Hawkins asking her hubby out, getting hit by the car was the best thing that's ever happened to her. You know, she expanded her reach with that. You know, and if you don't know, something or you want to get leveled up and you don't know who to turn to remember you can always get your asking here ask for that help reach out to me and i'll put you directly in in touch with pam she also will remind you don't look to change everything like now and at once because if you are overweight like i have been and even pam mentioned she's been it didn't take her a month to put on that weight or me a month to put on that weight it took time so remember as i always talk about inch by inch it's a cinch by the yard it's hard right? Just do it at incremental times of your day. And what you're doing now, if you're 25, 35, if you're 25, your 35 year old self is thanking you or not so much thanking you for what you're doing with yourself. So make sure that what you're doing today, your older self is going to thank you. And lastly, wake up with that attitude of gratitude. Remember your vibe attracts your tribe. If you are waking up and you're feeling a gratitude, you're going to attract those people. And that's what my good friend Pam does. She's planting trees she's probably never going to sit in the shade of. She levels up her health. She levels up her wealth. She's funny, fantastic, beautiful, 
and she's earned her varsity squad letter here at time to shine today thank you so so much for coming on i absolutely love your guts pam it's been amazing i i have a new bestie thank you Yay, for the rusty <laughs> we'll chat soon